Yo, what's going on, everyone? How you all doing? Hope you're doing good. Um, got a bit of a new setup here, so it's filming straight down. Hopefully, it looks good when editing. Anyway, the reason it's just directly facing my laptop with just a weird shape on there. Um, I thought I'd record what I'm doing here. So I downloaded off Thingiverse. I don't know if you know what Thingiverse is. It's a website where you can get like 3D models and laser cut files and things like that for completely free. And the stuff you can get there is absolutely fantastic. And I found this. It was an adjustable laser head. Be a laser cutter. So for the K40. So basically, your where your lens sits, you can pop that on there. Pop that in there. And then you can just tighten this up there. So you can pull it out a bit, tighten that up. And it's uh, it's locked in place. It's a really good design, I'm not going to lie. But the way this works is you replace your whole third mirror holder and the bracket itself. Now, when I put this on, this was too far forward. So I could not get the beam to hit the center or whatsoever. So it was just coming, it was coming directly left, I believe it was, and it was just hitting the plastic. I couldn't get it to go directly down at all. So I've had to put the old bracket back on with the old uh, third mirror holder. And at the moment, I haven't got anything on there. So I thought I'd, I thought I'd basically just make my own uh, and a, a much simpler design. So instead of just using something, so instead of just using something where you've got to replace everything, I'm just going to design it where you'll have your your lens and that'll be screwed onto a thread. And then it'll have something similar to this. See if I got something. So something similar to this, but it's just good. It, you're not going to need to screw anything in, it's just going to fit over the bracket itself. So you just slide it on and then you'll be able to hopefully pinch this in, put it on and I'm hoping that I'm hoping it'll work. I haven't tried it yet. So I'm still in the design process of it. But at the moment as well with the, let me see if I can get the threads. So the threads are printed there. It's all just coming off and it's, it's a bit crap. <laughs> So I've been using a program called Tinkercad. Let me see if I can find it down here. Well, it's, just, it's a website where you can basically make your own 3D models. It's completely free. And uh, it's good for making threads. So I've made this, this is just a test piece. And the threads on there are so small. They 3D print perfectly on an FDM printer. And it, this fits. Uh, make sure it's the right way. But this fits in there absolutely perfect. Look at that. So there's no struggle for that at all. It just fits in there perfect. So I can now, now I know I've got this made to size to fit within the lens holder. I can, let's have a look if I can find it on here. I'm not looking at this. I've got a screen in front of me, so the camera's on, which I'm looking at. So I can't really see the screen from this angle. Anyway, so that's the... Oh. That's the design. Let me see if I can just zoom into that for you. So you can see the, the threads there. And my plan is... I'll just go forward a couple of steps here for how I've made it. Uh, I would preferably rather do this on my other computer, but my laptop, which I use to connect to uh, my printer, my laser cutter, is down the garage, and the uh, my gaming and design computer is in the house, which is too far back. <laughs> um, so yeah, what I'm doing, I'm just I'm doing small adjustments to it, doing a quick print, making sure it fits. So now I know I've got this the perfect size for that. I can make the design changes now I want. So now this is made, so that's just a little bit bigger than the lens. So how it'll work is your lens will fit, me, where is my lens? Your lens will just sit in there and then where you just screw this into it, it should hold the lens in place as well. Because the one thing with the design of the one I downloaded 
Uh, I don't think I've got a piece. Oh, yeah, I think this is it. That hole is so much bigger than the lens. If you move it too much, the lens just comes out of place. So I'm changed. I'm definitely changing that part of the design as well. So it's just a little bit bigger than the lens. So it does hold the lens in place as well. So we've done that. Uh, we're going to make it longer. One thing I found with Tinker Card as well is, let me show you the mesh on this. It is absolutely disgusting. Look at that. I don't know how they expect you to work with that. I don't know if they do on purpose. You can't uh, do any adjustments to it yourself. Uh, right, anyway, yeah. So my plan is going to be, let me just go forward loads more steps. Right, so it's like I said, it's going to have something similar to this, but instead of having the the bolt you need to tighten on it, it's I'm hoping I've got to print this and test it. So I'm going to print it with a big gap like that. I'm hoping they're going to be, you know, just a little bit bendy enough. This <laughs> this, this is a terrible uh, thing to show you because it has broken already. But I'm hoping I can squeeze it in just a little bit enough, so you, when you slide it up, it opens back up. And obviously it just sits in place. That's my plan. Right, so... I should just come off the printer. I'll just take the supports off. So I've put these two little notches in there, so I'm open. So it is different to this design, so it's not going to work with this design as such. Uh, that a bit more. No, that one's broke. So yeah, I'm hoping I can have a similar design to this with only two notches on each side. And then I can just move, snap them. I'm hoping I can... No. <laughs> I, was, oh, I was hoping they'd be a little bit more malleable than, than they were. Um, that didn't work. Oh god. Right, so that, that didn't work. Let me just make sure this bit works though. So the threads... So it works fine, but it doesn't screw all the way, I don't think. Ah, oh, there we go. We've got a seam on the print there. I don't know if you can see that. Just printed a seam. We didn't really want that there because that's going to affect the thread. There we go. So you can see in there, the lens is there. That's threaded on. So that works. I am going to change the approach completely though. I'm going to have... I'm just going to have the part as a single tube. I'm going to have that as another tube with a small hole on the side so we can fit. Probably a bit smaller than this one. So we can fit just a bolt in there and then we can tighten that. We can align the lens to how far we need it from our piece and then we can tighten this up. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I, I was just printing in PLA, see, and I don't think PLA is soft enough for it to slightly bend. I know PLA is all right to use, but it's not toxic, see, if the beam does hit it. Um, right, yeah. Back to the drawing board again. I'm going to redesign it on the computer now and then we'll come back once we've redesigned it. We'll send it to print and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, we are back and these have just finished printing. And it looks good.
Uh, right, it looks like the... Uh, looks like my sizes are off slightly with this one. I'm not sure how. Right, there it goes. It's in there, but it's tight. But it's fine. I can re reprint that one bit. So that fits on there. It's on there fine. I mean, the threads work on there fine, but it's not definitely not straight. Right, that's fine on there. Now I'll need to check on the actual cutter if this bit fits. Uh, right, it's a bit dark over here, but this fits on there. Perfect. But I don't like how long it is. So I'm going to make that shorter. Yeah, I'll probably half the size of that. And I'll probably make the outer bit thinner because it's quite thick. But yeah, that's perfect. The threads are absolutely perfect on it. I'll take that. So everything fits perfectly. The threads work exactly how they're supposed to. Um, yeah, the only thing is that doesn't fit on that doesn't fit in there so well. So I think I'm going to make this thinner. Uh, the outer the outer diameter is going to be thinner on this one, and I think I'm going to make the outer diameter thinner on this one as well, because that is a little bit thick up there. I'm going to go back to the drawing board again, and we're going to yeah we're definitely going to make it smaller as well. It's definitely too tall. Let's get to that. We'll be back in a jiffy. Right then. So we've done, I think this is like the third, maybe the fourth version of this I've made now. So this one fits. Let's see if I can get a close up of that for you. This fits perfect. The seam line on the 3D print is making it a little bit tight. So I'm going to sand it down a little, but that fits. Like, that's a really nice fit, that is. Right, um, yeah, I forgot to... I remodeled this bit, and I forgot to put the hole in the side that I was going to put the, the bolt in. So I'm just going to drill a hole in it for now, but I will remodel it with the hole. It'll only take two seconds to do. So this is the part that holds the lens. Just going to take the lens out a moment. And so you can see... See the threads on there. I've made them the the minimum. Uh, I've I, I can make them with them still working, but without the print actually failing. That fits on it absolutely perfect, and the lens will fit in there. So the threads on that side. Again, that fits in there. So let's just take you off. Just go over to the laser cutter. And so the threads are there for that. And that should hopefully just thread on. Which it has. And then obviously this will be adjustable. I might not need to sand that down actually to be honest with you, so it's not doing too bad. Right, let's take it off, we'll put the hole in it, put the bolt in, and we'll put it on properly and give it a test run. Okay, we're back for the last time, hopefully. Just print this last bit out now, so as you can see, that was the, the previous one, and the walls were a bit thin. And now I've made this one, which is quite a bit thicker and quite a bit stronger. And, oh yeah, when I remodeled it, I did put the little hole in. And I, I found a smaller bolt, which, let's just see if that fits in there. Oh, 
Perfect. Again, I'm probably going to resin print like something a little bit bigger to, to make it easier to turn back and forth. And this should fit in there without any problems. So it goes as far as that. It's so then the inside's hitting the thread up here. Um, it, I mean, it could be longer, but I don't think I'm going to need it any longer than that with my machine, to be honest with you. Yeah, I could make this bit maybe a bit longer. No, or maybe just that bit. So let's just make sure this screw mechanism works. <laughs> works really well. Let's pop. Let's pop my lens in. Um, so it goes. That way, I believe. And this, and then I'll just screw into that. Still a little bit loose in there, but it's not. Yes, it's not going to come. It's not going to come loose while this going back and forth. So there we go, guys. That is that's my adjustable lens, my K forty. Right. Uh, okay. So we need to. Pop this on there, so it's not the best angle. Uh, there's not much room to get a camera, a light, and myself in here. Um, I think I'm going to have to put this on the last. So this should just fit over the top. The thing is with these 3D printed threads, it's hard to get it threaded on there perfect because it's plastic. You can screw it on and it'd be a little bit wonky. There we go. And so this in there. Where's me wood? So test piece of wood in there, it needs to be, this is my little uh, measuring tool, so I can loosen this. So I've got, that's actually quite a good little feature there, say if I put it to the maximum there, I can put my piece of wood underneath, loosen this, it just drops automatically and I know that straight away, that's at the right focal length. Now, another thing I've just realized as well is with this adjustable lens, so the one I 3D printed I found on Thingiverse, it, was, um, it wasn't it was hitting the trigger. It was something in the way, the way it was made. This was just too thick, so it, anytime it home, it wouldn't hit. With this, if I home that now, I can fit my finger behind there. There's loads of room. So again, yeah, there's a, another big benefit to that there. I am going to apologize if you can hear loads of like, background noise. I've got the water pump running and the extractor fan at the back as well. Uh, right. Uh, this is just a test piece. Don't worry about the bed at the moment. I'm doing something with the bed. Right, so I've got the lid closed just for safety. I don't want it ruining my camera and I don't want it ruining my eyes. So I'm just going to run a quick vector cut of just a circle. I haven't got my air compressor on, but uh, it's a new little circle. So if we look at that, perfect, absolutely perfect. Uh, let's go over here. Let me just bring this down a moment. Oh, 
on there that cut was there just falls out and I'll do a bottom left one so I'm doing this as well at 10 millimeters a second at uh, it's probably about eight milliamps that one fell out straight away. I did up the power from 15 to 16 then. And we'll do one in the bottom right. Again, that's cut that one there. Oh, it hasn't. Oh, yeah, there we go. And it's going to try one in the dead center. Yeah, that one fell out straight away. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to move this up just to make sure it does work. So let's just put this as high as it goes. So it is now out of focus by Probably about three mil. So let's just put him there. Same speed and same power. But it's out of focus. I don't know how well it's going to... Yeah. There we go. Still cut through fine. So, you know, the best thing about having an adjustable lens is now is... Obviously you can cut a more variety of different materials and you can actually do the focus lens. So instead of having the focus from the top of the lens to the top of the material, so I know this is three mil. If I focus that there and bring it down, I'm just gonna tighten that up a minute and then bring it down a tiny smidge. So that there now roughly, I can, I, I probably need to cut another one of these out to basically factor the thickness of the material in. So now the the focal length on this is now set to the center of this piece of wood. So instead of the top, it should be the center. So you should get a much cleaner cut. I will try it now. So I'm gonna go on a lower power with the same speed. And we should still get a nice clean cut. Lovely. So that was a 2%, 2% less. So instead of 16, I went at 14. I'll try it again up here at even lower. So I'll go down to 12. So 14 is, 14 is about seven milliamps and 12, 12 is about six. So I'm gonna run a cut at six milliamps. Happy days. I'm, well, last I'm going to go down to 10, 10%. Which I'm not sure. 10% is five milliamps. It's a really clean, there's no burning around that at all. Before I push that out. I haven't got any air assist on this at the moment either. Look how clean that is. Well, that's gone all the way through, as you can see. It's not as good. So I think 10 milliamps, 10% uh, there is probably the minimum I can get away with. And obviously I can go higher power and higher speed. So I'll have a mess around with that, see what works best. But yeah, having an adjustable lens, yeah, it gives you that little bit more control over cutting. So with... <laughs> Before I had an adjustable lens, and I have cut 10 mil um, acrylic, but it took quite a, quite a few passes to do, but the focal length was set. Um, it was with the old bed, it was probably set to the actual bottom of the material, so it wasn't it wasn't the best. Um, but like I said, with this, I get absolutely fantastic cuts on you. Uh, apart from the uh, some of the random ones I've done, so I've done that one, one of these two, 
that worm, and one of these. And as you can see, it's low power, a nice speed. There's no charring, there's no, you know, there's no smoke damage or nothing like that. It is perfect. So I'd recommend, I definitely 100% recommend getting one of these. I'll put a link in the description where to, to download this if you want to 3D print it yourself. I might make it a paid file uh, just because the amount of work I did put into it. If I do, it'll be dirt cheap and it takes less than an hour to print, I believe. Yeah, it takes less than an hour to print. Um, if you haven't got a 3D printer and you'd like one of these, again, I'll put a link in the description uh, where I'll make them and sell them so you can buy them. Again, they cost a sod all to make, so you know I'll charge sod all to have them made. All I need, I'll only do the 3D print itself. You'll need to provide the the uh, the screw itself and obviously your lens. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Give it a thumbs up, like. Any questions, put it down in the comments. If you're going to try and model it yourself and you've never modeled before and you've got any questions of what to do, again, put it down in the comments and uh, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, if you're new here, subscribe. Don't be shy. Big red button down the bottom it says subscribe in big white writing. Can't miss it. All right then, guys. Again, hope you enjoyed it. We will see you in the next one. All have a good one. So, I don't know.